Hello and welcome back to 30 Days to Learn Photoshop. This is day 13, the lasso and marquee tools. I'm Ben Gribbin and the lesson objectives for today are to learn how to use the lasso and marquee tools in our workflow. So let's jump over to Photoshop and we're going to consider what the marquee tools are first. That would make sense. So the marquee tools and the lasso tools are very similar. They create selections of areas and they are able to then mask off that area so you can concentrate whatever tool you are using in conjunction with them on that area. So we're going to show you what we mean now. If we press M that will take us to the rectangular marquee tool or if we press shift and then we can then cycle through to the elliptical marquee tool. And what these do is create areas of selection. Now these selection areas become a critical part of your workflow. You've got numerous options along the top here and we're going to show you what these do. So once you've selected an area off, you can then use pretty much every tool within that area. And what it will do is literally restrain your actions to that specified selection. So for example, we can delete an area, make it transparent. We can resize an area like so. And we can apply filters we can apply different colouring to that certain area. So that's why they're used. They're used for very quick kind of masks of an area. And you've got multiple options for these. So let's say you want to add more than one selection. You can do that by using this option up here. Or very quickly, you could just press Shift to add an extra selection. So if you just do that, click and drag, that then creates an entire group of selections alternatively you can just use this menu up here so now every single one way click and make here is added on as another part of the selection this one will actually remove any selections or cut out from a selection we've made so for example we could make a selection and then cut out the center of it like so and you can also jump to that by pressing alt and holding alt down and then clicking and dragging as normal and that removes that area from a selection so then when we're creating or working on that area we've actually got a cutout in the middle you can also feather these selections so if we were to type into the feathering box here like 30 pixels that will feather the edge of our selection you can see it's gone slightly round at the edges just to show that now when we paint in will actually have a soft edge so that's quite handy particularly when you're tracing objects that have a, a complicated background to avoid borders and things like that so once we've painted that in and undo that you can see that's got a soft faded edge to it and there's a, some more options as well you can also create perfect squares using this tool so if you click and start to drag your shape if you now press and hold shift that will convert that to a perfect square should you need to do so and the same goes for the elliptical marquee tool you've got all the same options but also you have got the ability if you press shift and hold it down you can create a perfect circle you can also transform these selections so once we've created one if we go to select and transform selection we can actually transform this selection as well because the current selection we have will just change the whole picture as you would as you need it to do but if you go to select and transform selection this actually allows you to resize the box itself rather than the image that's contained you can then use that to fine-tune and modify that now unfortunately there's no shortcut that for that for some reason so that's the marquee tools now they are a little bit more basic they create squares and circles and that's pretty much it unless you start adding to them but in order to mask out images and really get find control over your selections you can use the lasso tools and there are three we're going to consider all three there is a lasso tool the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool now they're available under L so if you press L and press shift and L if you want to cycle through those they have all the same options so we can add and subtract from selections using shift and alt or this panel along here and these are great because they actually allow us to create custom shapes with our selections. So we're going to show you how you could use one to mask out this vehicle here 
removing the background very carefully. All you need to do, zoom in a little bit so you can get to see the edges quite clearly. And it doesn't really matter where you start, but we're starting using the polygonal lasso tool. So we're going to start here and literally every click creates a point. So it works very similar to path tools. And then you just follow the shape of the car. So every change in direction, if you click, move your cursor to the direction you want to go, then create your next point. And all you're doing is essentially tracing out the very edge of the car. Now it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of practice. The longer you do take and the higher resolution you can work with, the better, but that's in an ideal world. So all you need to do is just take your time, work your way around the image and very carefully mark out the area that you wish to keep. And obviously some images are more detailed than others. This one's got some, uh, a lot of different changes in angles and, and different surfaces and textures. So it does take a little bit of time and practice, but all you need to do then is join up the two, two ends. And this creates a selection that has perfectly followed the edge of the car. Now, if we hit delete on that, we can then start to see how this becomes useful. If we were to work our way around the whole car, we could remove the entire background and just have the car itself as an isolated object. So that's one way we can work with those. We could then move the car onto another background. We can better adjust it. We could rotate it so it's level, all kinds of things. And as before, you can add additional areas that you want to work on. Let's say you've made a mistake or you just need to add another area but don't want to delete the original selection. If you just press shift, you can then create that additional area that you want to do so. Now you'll notice we're going off the edge of the artboard when we're doing this. And that's just because when you go off the artboard, it will select right up to this edge. So we don't have any tiny little borders or lines that we don't want along the edge. That just gets rid of them very simply and easily. One other thing you'll want to be wary of, when you're zoomed in close working on the details, the really fine details, and it's recommended to do that so that you can make sure you get every part of the whatever object you're tracing in. Once you go to the edge of the window that you're working in, you'll notice it starts to scroll. So you want to go very slowly when you get towards the edge of a, a window and you can actually just help maneuver the window like so by pointing the direction you want to go. If, however, you were to go too fast, you do end up off course and getting lost on your image, which is kind of a problem in CS5 Photoshop because they got rid of the ability to zoom out whilst you have this tool selected. So in order to get around that, what you need to do is press the space bar and you can just simply drag your way around. Unfortunately, for some reason, they removed the option and the ability to be able to zoom back out to get an overview of the image while you're using this tool. So use the space bar. And let's say you just want to close your path. Uh, rather than going around the whole image, you want to just close the path on the next point. If you create your shape and then press Command or Control, it will actually close the path off for you on that point, so rather than you having to go back. Because you could be 5,000 pixels away from wherever you started. So that's another little quick tip just to close off your selection area. So let's look at the lasso tool, which is kind of like the polygonal lasso tool, except it's free form. So instead of getting nice cut straight lines, this will follow where you draw your actual cursor. And that's good in a way, but it also can look a little bit messy, a little bit untidy. I've actually got a feathered edge onto that. So let's just remove that. And what it does is it follows where you draw, creates the selection for you. And we can we can use all the same sort of options as the other tools. And we can just delete the edge there like so. So it's a little bit more freeform, slightly more difficult to get nice straight lines with it, for example. Along there you can see that line's gone very wonky and a little bit odd, but it does help on curves and things like that. And also we have a magnetic lasso tool. Now this is completely different. It actually works out on an image 
an area that you want to select kind of like the paint bucket tool does except it's helping you select out an area so let's just show you that now if we click on this little area here you'll notice we're not really doing anything we've clicked once and it automatically creates these paths it automatically works out the area you want your lasso tool to work on and it kind of lays down like a spider's web and sticks to that edge it does a fairly decent job it's a little bit sometimes a little bit messy but you can actually help tweak how accurate it is again by using things like the frequency which is the amount it's going to add uh, points to the path and also using the contrast which helps when it's considering the area so for example if we turn the contrast right up hopefully this will help it uh, calculate the areas we want to select a little bit more easily and then again you can uh, add and subtract from these selections you can feather the selections and it's a very versatile set of tools the lasso tools very quick and easy to use they work really well and when you use a combination of the marquee tools and lasso tools you're able to mask out images and and select at large areas very quickly and just be able to do quick deletes and edits on them so what have we learned in today's lesson well we've learned how to use the marquee and lasso tools and we've also considered what each tool is used for and when we would use them and your task for this lesson is to use the polygonal lasso tool to cut out an object from its background so just practice on doing that once you've selected the area if you press delete it deletes that background next time on 30 days to learn photoshop we'll be looking at the clone stamp and pattern clone stamp thanks for listening